Hey guys, Finfalls here for another early access, quick look, beta impression video. This is Banners of Ruin. It's an early access game. This game is available on Steam, possibly elsewhere. It is one of those roguelike card battlers and the inspiration of or inspired by Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire really created its own genre here. This game is put out by, let me go to the store page, sorry. It is put out by Monty Barrows, the developer. The publisher is Goblin Studio and Maple Whispering, maybe some others. So I'm gonna run through, this is a pretty long uh, card battler game. The runs are definitely longer than Slay the Spire. It's a little more complex for pro and con in that regard. It's, I think, it's got a ways to go before it's ready for release. It looks like most of the art is ready. A lot of the stuff is ready for it, but there's definitely fine tuning needed. Let's go ahead and abandon the run that I had done before. And we're gonna start a new game. And for this game, I'm gonna skip the tutorial. We're gonna play mouse pair, which is the default. You do have a couple other pairings. These are basically like your, think classes, but it's just your base deck that you start with. It doesn't have a ton of impact on the rest of the game as far as I can tell, or at least at this point. Just starting deck. All right, and I'm gonna just play through the first leg. Like Slay the Spire, there are three legs. You can see it here at the top of the screen. We have um, kind of the intro area. You have one little like precursor step, and then you start your normal leg of a run, ends in a minor boss battle. Well, I guess you could call it an act boss battle until third act, you face the big bad. Supposedly the hardest fight definitely is the hardest fight, but it's not, in my experience, the hardest one to win because Act 2 is kind of the grind point. Act 1, easy. Act 2 is make or break. Either you crush that run and you're set up to breeze through Act 3, or you die. That's kind of how it works. So first thing we get here, uh, well, let's look at our deck before we do anything. Similar to Slay the Spire, you have attack and defense cards. Unique aspect of this game, some cards will have a little tag at the top. These are going to tell you which character can play the card. We'll look at that in just a moment, but your typical stuff, do damage gain shield, uh, attack multiple times, apply bleed, status effects. So we will go through more of those as we proceed through the game. Other thing we can look at here is our party. So versus Slay the Spire where you have your hero, this you have a party of one through six combatants. Uh, ideally, this is kind of one of the things about the game that's weird. You can have up to six, but it seems really like two to three is the max you really want. Four is okay, but you really have to have the deck that's working with that. There's pros to having at least three in my opinion. Some people like keeping it down to two. I think act three goes way smoother with a good three party team. Let's look at the first one here. This is our mouse. So the race doesn't mean a whole lot. I think it kind of affects what passives you might get, but in reality, it doesn't matter. The more units of one race you have, the more you can take advantage of some combo cards. So each character has two hand slots that they can equip, and that's where the little class icon comes on up here. They have two resources they use through combat, stamina, which is used each round, and then willpower, which is used per fight. They do not regenerate willpower during a combat unless they have a special ability, but at the start of the next fight, your next encounter, you'll have four resources again. So the cards, similarly, if it's in yellow, that's stamina use. Blue is resource or willpower use. And then we see the damage. So you have two hand slots, primary and secondary. You can use two one-handed weapons. You can use a shield in one hand, or you can use a two-handed weapon. I do not believe you can wield two shields. Could be something they consider down the road. I think that's just kind of silly, not a realistic fighting style, blah, blah, blah. Also, I just I think shields are okay, but you definitely don't need a lot of it. It's just helpful to get through the early parts of the game till you get special art or special armors. Like here, my armor is medium armor. Just gives me 14 shields at the start of combat. And let's look at the bear. So here's my bear. He just has a two-handed weapon, same stats. Everything's the same. We get a chance to increase our stats as we go through and level up. Level up here, we see we're level one, zero of 500. Same for our mouse. Let's get into the first encounter. Oh, you can also change their combat positions. So designated by their icons, matches up at the bottom of their character portrait. But we're gonna leave them where they're at. It doesn't really matter. My experience is best just to have everyone in the front row. 
All right, so the unique aspect of this game is this three lane card system. So in this first little encounter, all the countdowns are at one. That's before we get to the end of the, I guess the street and we encounter the boss that we may encounter. We're gonna kind of have a boss fight here, but not really. So we get to choose between all these different abilities. So the first one, Helping Hands Provisions. It's a place where you can buy cards. I think maybe you can trade stuff in, sell it. Uh, I don't use them too often. Forgotten Tunnel, you can just skip right past these, go straight to the combat, or a gift, get some money. So let's just obviously take the money. You notice everything counted down except for the Forgotten Tunnel. These are both blocked, so we have to go into the combat. You emerge from the black, find yourself in one of the guard bunks. Well, where the devil did you come from? You can't be from here. And we fight. So this first part, I am going to just kind of give you a tutorial of the game. Later on, I will, uh, at the end of the video, try to give you my review of the game. I'll give some thoughts along the way. Let me know what you think of this format. It's a little different than the format of the last video I did. I think this one deserves more of a play-by-play -play because if you pick up the game, it doesn't explain things always the best, and it's better just to learn it from someone else. So obviously we have our hit points and our shield value on each character. Same for all the enemies. Notice the enemies can be of various races. That does matter at times. So this one has, um, well, let's start here. Each round starts with one row. The enemies obviously going um, to attack you but you get to play all your cards first. So you can look to see what the enemy's attack would be if you look down below them. I don't like how you have to hover below to see this. It also, when you hover them, it lets you know who they're gonna attack. So it outlines your character in red that's going to be attacked. It can be a little difficult to see. I definitely think this could be a colorblind issue too, but first one's gonna attack my bear, second one's gonna attack my bear, third one's gonna attack my bear. My bear doesn't have very much shield, so this is concerning. Let's see what their attacks do. Eight damage. You can see the eight, and then since it has a little extra marking stack to it, you know it does something else. So they're gonna do eight damage and apply safety and numbers. Safety and numbers at the start of the turn. This character has three more allies. Their defense is raised by 10, or shield, whatever, whatever you wanna call it. And they are all doing the same attack. So they will all get 10 more armor, unless I can at least take one of them out. We probably can though. All right, so we have the great sword here. We also have this card called Second Wind. Let lets you draw a card and you gain a Vigor. Vigor basically uh, refunds the cost of the stamina on the next card you play. So if we play this, uh, and also which hero you have selected is the one that's going to use their resources to play it. So we're going to play Second Wind, and now we're going to play his weapon, which does 12 damage to all targets. Since we have a Vigor, we're going to get those two stamina right back. So we select the row that we want to attack. This is called a rank, and then I think there's a second little red box in the back. The guy behind them would be a row. So you have ranks and rows. I think that's what they call them. Anyway, so we can select on any of these guys. It'll do a damage to all of them. 12 damage to everyone. This little guy's down here at two points, so we can kill him pretty easily. Looks like we could take out two guys this round. If I'd used this, I could have got charge. Um, could have been worth it, but we would have been low on stamina. What I'm actually going to do is use this shield card. It gives you pacified. Pacified just means you cannot play any additional cards that turn or until you're out of pacified uh, charges, which we're only going to get one. So we'll play that. He has 21 armor. He'll easily survive. Switch to our mouse. And we can do 8 damage with his hatchet, which is kind of overkill. But why not? We'll just take out the middle guy. Do 8 and 2. He's done. At the end of the turn, any unused cards are discarded, and you'll draw a new hand. Very similar to Slay the Spire and all the other games. They don't have three allies, so the safety numbers won't trigger. And this round, we drew basically all defense cards. We do have eight damage and apply four bleed, so we will play that with our bear. The bleed will trigger before the enemy goes, and it ignores shielding, so great. Do it up here. And this guy would be attacking my mouse. Doesn't really matter. We'll be killing him. This card deals an extra four damage if the attacker is in the front row or front rank, and he is, they're dead. Just like all of these games, at the end of each combat, you're gonna get some kind of reward, usually card selection. Card selection is mostly bad. Just like most these kind of games, taking extra cards is usually a detriment to your total deck. 
You always want the money, of course. All right, so what do we have here? Swap front and rear rank, enemy rank, Spanish. It uses two willpower. We wouldn't even be able to play that right now. Apply three marked to an enemy. So the status effect uh, gives them vulnerable whenever all their party members are vulnerable when that unit dies. If there are more than one race on that rank, they all get overwhelm. Overwhelm is additional damage from all attacks that turn. For every stack, it's 25%. So if you have four stacks of overwhelm on someone, you do double damage. Or we can take six damage to a rank, which is pretty good. It only costs one stamina. So I will take that. That's going to be better than most of my attack cards. And it's an effective attack, but you don't want a ton. I just kind of want more to increase my threat density over my defense density. It is very hard. You do not get to remove very many cards from your deck. So be very careful with that. I think that's an area they can improve. All right, now we enter the city. This is actually now kind of the start of the run. And you start out right away with another combat. Each of these rows has 16. And with the countdown at the top, whenever that countdown goes away, it progresses forward. So these are all going to progress regardless which one I choose. So sometimes the card will have a countdown of three, so it'll stay there for three turns. You can dodge around those cards sometimes. So what do we have? Eight damage, eight damage, eight damage. So two at the mouse, one at the bear. And are these guys, these guys are all doing safety in numbers again. So ideally we take out multiple of them this round. And it does not look like we have that option. We're gonna start with the second wind. Great, that lets us play the Sharpen Steel for free, um, effectively. And this will kill anyone we hit. So we'll just go ahead and hit the guy, one of the guys hitting our, yeah, we'll go for the one hitting the bear. So he's gonna bleed, so he's dead on his turn. We're gonna go down here, take cover. We're just gonna shield up. So he's perfectly fine, won't take any damage. And then we'll take away at one of these units. And we'll take some extra shielding. So he's dead. Four, eight. And this turn they're both just gonna do two times three, so six damage to whoever they hit. Or not four, two times three. Uh, we do have the axe, so that's going to pretty much wipe them out. So let's just start with that. This card with draw applies five shield to target ally and lets you move swap their position. This can be very useful. I'll demonstrate it here. So normally you don't want to use your willpower. Uh, and I've, normally I would just kill the unit. But you see how he's attacking the bear? If you play a card that moves your character, now when they attack... I'm just going to end turn. It's going to whiff. Evaded, I should say. Let's see, evaded. They attack a position. If they're attacking a row, then it's going to hit everyone on that row still. And we'll just finish them off with this little pokey card. Gain money. Let's see, four damage to each opponent, uh, to the opponent party. Most of the parties you're going to fight them up against are three members. In Act 1, Act 2, you're going to see more four and fives and an act three is mostly sixes so this is effective later on but four damage is actually pretty weak later on in the game and that much stamina you don't want to be wasting that realistically uh, reckless age you apply 15 shield to an ally that character and you both gain winded winded basically sacrifices a stamina the next turn or anticipation uh, if you lose hit points vitality from an attack you gain 20 shield for every stack of anticipation you had anticipation goes down by one each turn so if you have this and you know your character is going to take damage you could do this to give them shield but you're still losing vitality and vitality does not heal between rounds you have to have there's a rare card that you can get that does it or you have to have encounters that do it it's pretty rare i'm going to skip all these cards none of them are that good and we just move on so notice those all went down went away and we're all on row 15 so quick thinking, I can level up a unit. We're 150 experience away from leveling up. We could interact with some guards, or we could select a card uh, to move it to this lane and add plus one to its counter. So I could take the decoy, move any one of these to that slot, and then I can do that next turn. I'm going to just take the quick thinking. A level up is great. I'm going to level up the mouse. 
Why not? It doesn't really matter at this point. Like I said, their passives, I think, are slightly specific to race, but not wholly. Um, so first thing, every level you choose a stamina or will. The max level is 8 or 10. Uh, I think it's 10. And in this case, I'm, I'm going to look at my potential card first. All right, so I get these talents. Talents are spells that you will play, just like any other card. It's just these are specific to your character. So when I draw it, only this character will be able to play it, the mouse. And if I have a second mouse later on, they cannot play it either. It is this mouse. So call him Bob. Bob's the only one who can play this card. So his character removes all negative debuffs and gains three shield for each stack cleared. So that could be a huge shield if he has a lot of debuffs on him. It's not going to be draw a card for each status effect on target opponent. That can be effective. Or deal weapon damage three times. That's pretty effective. I've actually never seen this one. So I'll take it. Even though he's not a big weapon dealer, I could get a two-handed weapon and put it on him. And that would be great. Something with like 12 damage or 13 damage. So we'll take it. Also, he has nothing he's using willpower for. And in this case, um, it's very tempting to get a second willpower. But I'm going to just take stamina for now. This basically means we can only play Whirlwind once per combat on him. So here we have, we could do an elite combat. Tick down counters are two on these, so these will be here next round. So I could take Hide, which discards the cards from the other two lanes, or I just take a Weapons Catch. So maybe we'll find a two-handed weapon here for him. So down here at the bottom shows all the things that we could take. You can drag the armors onto your character like this. So... This is the same thing he already had, though. Medium armor, start with 14. I can do it to my bear. Now, the thing with this, though, is the bear's armor only gave him 6, but it also gave him an extra stamina per turn. So basically gave him an extra mana per turn. That's very powerful. I'm going to keep the bear with the extra mana per turn, especially since he hasn't leveled up yet. The, arm, the heavy armors give you 30, but you lose 2 stamina a turn. That's pretty pretty hard. This guy only has two stamina to begin with, so he would never be able to do actions after the first round of combat. The other items we have here are these crossbows. You can't do anything from here. You have to go into the character screen. So these do 13 damage, and you gain pacified, so you cannot play any more cards that turn. And you gain three charge. Thar charge increases the damage you do with your next attack. I'm going to do something I normally wouldn't do. I'm actually just going to get rid of both of these, and I'm going to get the bow. So now I have this crossbow that does 13 damage, but I lose my shield, which is actually super powerful um, and pretty good early game, but we're just going to pass on it. We're going to, any weapon you don't take also just goes away, which is confusing in some ways that you can't carry any, I would like it if you could carry a couple items with you because like, say I find like a really cool sword or a good armor, but I just can't use it yet. I need to level up for it to be effective. Too bad. So I would like to have like two inventory slots or something so you can carry two of these items that you want to hold on to for maybe you're like literally 100 experience away from being able to use it effectively. You can just take things and be screwed uh, until you level up. You also don't know what the next counters are sometimes. So that's one thing I would like to see changed because this just feels bad. Leaving all of this stuff here feels horrible. And I'm not going to put the crossbow on the bear. I could give him that. He currently does 12 damage, but his attack, so the crossbow just does 13 damage, and you gain pacified. His, though, on the other hand, does 12 damage to everyone on a rank, which is great. I like attacking the whole rank. And it's a it works well with the uh, winded card. Alright, so here we can just hide and get away from both these combats, um, which is what I would normally do. But actually, the early runs, fighting is good, so I'll fight the normal combat just for experience points. Pretty easy fight here. Two mice, 16 and 6 shield. They are both doing the same attack. So do 2 times 4 and then move or swap to a random position. The moving and swapping uh, can be annoying later on. But not going to bother us here. Oh, how about this? We already have the whirlwind. So let's start with doing the 12 damage to the entire row. And now they're both dead. Whirlwind. Whirlwinding with the crossbow. Oh, yeah, I don't get to attack both of them. Uh, look at that. So much damage. 
Whirlwinding with the crossbow, that's a new one. So 61 for each ruin card in your hand. Ruin cards is a mechanic um, where it turns your cards into a card that's called ruin. They do specific things. It's not that great. Deal five damage if this breaks the target's shield. Deal an additional four times three, so do five plus 12 if it's good. Swap enemies ruin for back rank. Spanish, that card's still not good. We will take none. All right, so the bear leveled up. That's the reason we took the fight. So he can get this talent, which is not bad. Apply target stacks or apply target stacks of poison to each adjacent character. Poison is probably one of the main ways right now to run through the entire game. It's extremely effective in your round three fights, especially if you get enough of these kind of talents. Add the other two, discard all ruin cards, draw that many cards. The ruin mechanic, like I said, I think it's very wolf character focused. We're not using wolf though. Uh, this character removes all stacks. We saw that. So I'm actually going to take the plague. No, I'm not going to take the. Pl Ugh, do I want the plague? Yes. It is very good once you have the talent that lets you. Every time you damage someone, you put a stack of poison, or every time you take damage, put a stack of poison on someone. Hmm. Oof. And the artwork in the screen kind of tells you, or the card kind of tells you who it's most geared towards. There's a weasel character. The weasel gets a lot of passives that are based on uh, poison. Huh. Now you can pass. You can just forfeit. And I'm going to forfeit. Take no bonus. I am going to take a stamina. So this way he's getting better position to wear heavier armor. So now we have the option of taking a regular combat or I go to the brawlers. The brawlers is just a place to buy and sell. We'll go there. We'll skip combat. Um... Toe to toe. So gain toe to toe. So this would mean you gain this ability. It'll be an ongoing effect if it says gain X, you know, gain whatever. Toe to toe. Whenever this character attacks an opponent in the same lane, gain six. Banish. Banish just means you this card itself, once you play it, it's banished. But if you ca attack um whenever this character attacks an opponent in the same lane, he gains six armor. That's pretty cool. I'll take that. Normally I wouldn't spend my money here. Actually, I don't even know how much I spent. Oops. Because you want a good chunk of money at the end of the first round. All right, so here we could spawn some drunken guards. Drunken guards will um, provide you with, I can't remember if it's gold or XP when they expire. I'm going to let them expire. I'm going to take the quick thinking level up. This is great because we can use it on our bear who just leveled up and immediately jumped to the next level. So bear. Bear levels up. Awesome. Now we get to level them up. So on your third level, you get to choose a passive. So at the start of the turn, character gains 8 shield. Excellent. Every turn, he gains more armor than he starts the match with. Bleeding. Uh, at the start of the turn, or whenever this character deals damage, apply a bleed to the opponent. Bleeds are pretty good. Poison, though. Whenever this character receives damage, apply one poison. Poison, every turn, increases on a character. If I were going to be doing a full run, I'd probably take poison. I probably would have taken the other poison talent. Since I skipped the talent, I'm going to skip it here. Bleeding is okay, but I'm just going to take Steadfast. So now I have Steadfast. Um, that card I just took. This one. Now we have Toe to Toe. So we're getting pretty tanky. I am going to take willpower or er, stamina again. And I'll be happy about it. These guys expire. Search party is out for us. Um, I just have to do a combat here. Notice that the middle row is the lowest. So if I go there, I'm getting closer to the exit. First round, you actually kind of want to take it slow. You want to fight. Get ex excuse me, get experience, get your passives so you know where your deck's going. All right, so look how much stamina we have now. Now it's easy for us to play every card in our deck, or every card in our hand. Oh, wow. He's got both of those this round. Do six damage to the rank. Oh, yeah, I should look what they're doing. So he's going to do five damage to the rank, prioritize his front rank. He's going to do ten damage to the uh, mouse, and he's going to fi do five damage to the entire rank. So the mouse is taking 20 damage this turn, the bear is taking ten so ideally we take out the enforcer that's not too tough we actually can take out one of the top guys too 
So we'll do that. We'll select him, and we'll just take out the uh, the top one. And he just gained three charge, right? I thought he gained. Oh, it's when he plays this one. Um. Yeah, this will take out the middle guy. And we'll just do that. All right, round over. Crossbow is actually looking pretty good. I don't think it's... I think you would ditch it pretty quickly in a real run. It's not too bad here. Sure, let's go ahead and gain toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And it's not going to trigger because this unit's not in front of him. Actually, no, it still won't trigger. Um, let's do this. So charge. For every stack of charge you have, your next attack will deal its normal damage plus that amount for each time it hits. So rush... Normally does three damage one times three, but with three stacks of charge, it does 12 damage. So let's do that. And if you can't discard a card, you still get the effect. So we get three charge. He's going to attack my bear. It's not going to matter. Because look at that armor. Plus eight every turn. And now we can use the bear's passive. Look, he'll get... He got some bonus armor. Get some more bonus armor, but it's over. Money, card... Deal weapon damage and gain four bleed. That's we're gonna take that. That's actually really good because we have high damage weapons. And the bleeds basically is do weapon damage plus X. Easy victory. So now we have when this expires, the party takes five damage. Um, chance to improve or drunken guards. Drunken guard just gives us money. I'll take the money. We're gonna take five damage. Boink. Can't avoid it. Merchant in trouble. Crossroads. Or Lightfoot, so I can push basically clear past both of these. Um, I'll do the Merchant in Trouble. These encounters, unfortunately, almost always play out exactly the same. So I could steal 250, or I could choose from, I could defend the Merchant and choose from one of three skill cards. I'm just going to take the money. Basically, I robbed him. Now we clear them all down to nine. We're halfway through. I have to take combat. Oop, that one's elite in the middle. I'm going to skip the elite combat. Uh, we should have an opportunity one in a little bit here. I'll Actually, I'll take it. Show you how much more difficult an elite is. I think our team's fairly, fairly strong here. And when you do elites, you get equipment at the end. So this is an example where we have two rows of enemies. The way two rows works, or two ranks works, is only the one with the big red bar gets to attack each turn. They alternate back and forth. So you know what the units are going to do when they get a turn but only the active row gets to go. But for the hero side, when you have two rows of heroes or champions, they all get to activate at any time. So it is definitely an advantage for the player. So nothing great here. What do we have? We have attacking the mouse, the mouse, and the bear. So 10 damage and eight damage. So well, let's just start with this, the axe. So we have 10. Okay, so I guess we could take out one of those. And I actually think I'm going to do this to the back row and gain some armor. And we're done. So we weren't able to play all of our cards because it's an awkward account. Mm. Bear and beaver enemies tend to have this ability called Fury. It effectively means they gain increasing amounts of charge every turn. So they gain, at the end of their turn, they get charge equal to their stacks of Fury. And their Fury increases by plus two. So he had one charge because he was at one. Next turn he'll have three charge. And then five charge. And it really gets out of control because some of the boss characters um, are these middle units. And the boss characters obviously are tougher. But we will take him out pretty quickly. This is an easy elite encounter. 16. They are going for 1 and 1. 8 damage, and what's this other ability? It applies 1 winded. Okay. Well, let's start up here. Actually, let's go down here. We'll do winded. All right, great. Um, 
this is enough just to... Well, this guy's going to take four damage anyway, so if we hit over here... And we only need to do five to the top unit, and he'll bleed out. So he's going to bleed out. That means we can crossbow and kill this unit. But it doesn't matter, he's attacking the bear, so I could crossbow and kill this unit instead. That lets me shield up him and charge up. He's got one winded, he's got a ton of stamina, doesn't matter. Ooh, well, this is overkill. And you can win the fight in a round that's not even the active turn. Oh, uh, I should have played this one. Doesn't matter. Still dead. So, elite combats give you equipment. They give you everything else, though. Money. So think artifacts and slay the spire when you do an elite. Way worse than an artifact, though. So we can get another toe-to-toe, -to -toe, which is kind of interesting because it would stack. We would have two, two stacks of it. Uh, just deal 6 damage to the opponent with the lowest vitality. This is an interesting card, though, because it costs no resources. Or deal 6 damage if the characters in the back rank apply 6 shield to all your front ranks. Very good if you want to have someone in the back rank. I don't really care to right now. I'm going to skip on all these. Again, I don't want to fill up my deck. So for equipment this time, we just have two swords. They're both uh, these Estok. Estok. All right, I had to step away. So four times three is 12 damage and you gain five retaliate, which basically whenever you take damage, you deal that much back. They're pretty cool and you can dual wield these, which is actually pretty fun, but it's not the build we're, build we're going right now. It would not work very well with retaliate or uh, with whirlwind because weapon damage is based by, uh, as far as I know, it is based by that four. So it deal four damage three times, which sucks. It's not nearly as cool as the bow. So let's escape. We will take neither. Normally though, I would not have taken the uh, crossbow. So it'd be a great upgrade over the regular axe. Worse with whirlwind, but way better um, overall because it's 12 damage and works well with charge. But, quesada. Off-duty guards, thief, weapon catch. Weapon catch is always a selection of armors and weapons you can take. Very, very good in Acts 2 and 3, especially 3. It's going to be kind of crappy here. But there's some, not unique, but special armors you can get that are really good. The superior light armor is actually great. Uh, it's just straight better than the light armor we're using. And it's only 4 less armor than the armor that our mouse is using. The bonus stamina, not necessarily important. Great axe. Uh, it's 14 damage. If this breaks the target's uh, armor, deal damage equal to the armor lost to all their neighbors in the rank and lane. So basically everyone in the same row as them and everyone behind them or in front of them. Huh, that's actually a lot better than the crossbow. Now that I got the light armor and I'm about to level up, I effectively have four stamina. I like it. I like it with with Whirlwind because it's 14 damage times three. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Crossbow is sweet, but this is kind of cool. Guards go away, we get the 300. Now we can take a level up or some more money. We're actually pretty good on money. We could definitely hire one unit. If we take the 300, we'd be in a good position to potentially hire two. Two is the max I think I ever want, four total units. Three I think is kind of, well, I think four is pretty sweet if you get the right units and the right cards. But a level up would be great. My mouse just leveled up, or no, my mouse is about to level up. This would be better on the bear. So now the bear is gonna be a full level ahead again. All right, he gets another chance at a talent card. So one and one, if this character has no armor, deal five damage and apply three uh, bleed to the opponent's rank. It's okay. 
gain five retaliate gain carapace every time you take damage this turn gain retaliate it's okay whenever this target whenever target opponent takes gains a status effect they also gain two poison now that is interesting and we will take that at this point this character still has zero need for willpower so i will take stamina again next level most likely he takes willpower all right so we have a chance to heal or we could do combats we don't really need to heal right so i'm going to take the combat just so i can level up the mouse and of course this makes the video take longer not intentional so what are we doing attacking the bear attacking the bear attacking the mouse and they're each doing 10 no special effects but they each have charge fury going on all right so oh this is great all right so now we get to bust their armor and deal six damage to each adjacent that's great. Knocked everyone's armor off. At this point, killing either the bear or the top enforcer is priority. Don't have enough attack. Um, six. So yeah, let's start with this. We will focus on the top unit. So that gives them some extra armor. A little more armor. And we'll go some armor down here. So... We survived the round very easily. We've done a decent chunk of damage. That top enforcer will bleed out on his turn. Assuming, uh, yeah, he's gonna bleed out. So he is fine. We have Whirlwind, which lets us take out either one of the bottom two units very easily. That's the only class specific card and we don't have, yeah, so let's just take out the bottom enforcer. And, well, this, also takes them out we can do 14 damage and apply bleed so he's dead sure just gain some armor hit him again he's dead money card so we got some interesting ones here apply three marked and if there are more than one race in that rank which there almost always is you apply overwhelm as well this works extremely well with the talent that the bear just got Dual wielding, none of us are, but if you're dual wielding, you get to attack basically three times for weapon damage. But we have overbearing swing, deal weapon damage. If two-handed, deal damage to the lane. That's pretty good. That's really good since we have two people with big two-handed weapons. I'm going to go ahead and take the overbearing swing because we are extremely stamina heavy and we are doubled two-handed weapon. So it fits the deck, though I think the first card fits the bear the best. Mouse I'll level up. Or no, bear leveled up? No, mouse leveled up. So it gets a passive. So the first one is Pestilent on turn nine, double all stacks of poison on all opponents. In round in uh, act three, this will happen all the time. You will go to round 12, 14 pretty regularly. So that basically, when it doubles, it triggers that the enemies die in two turns. Noxious, all bleed applied to this character is converted to poison, which sucks because poison counts up, bleed counts down. Bleed ignores armor, poison does not. So it's a give and take. Or we just get impervious. This character gains bolster, uh right gains whenever this character gains armor they get plus five it's nothing special we're gonna take willpower here now we can whirlwind twice in a fight if we draw it so thief we lose money we can combat or off-duty guards on expire we get money so we'll let that expire we'll go ahead and take the combat not ideal but it's not the worst so this fight's getting a little harder. What do we have? Eight to the bear. Whole whole row, another eight to the bear. So I want to take out the sweeper if I can. I don't... Eh, actually, I will be able to, won't I? Let's just start with six damage to the rank. Now, I could... I don't need to. I'm going to say I could discard 
um, the shield to get some extra damage, but we're just going to do this. Boink. Very dead. And then let's just... Uh, we'll just chip away at one. I'm not too worried about the archer. So... They're both attacking the bear. Let's just give the bear a little extra armor. And we'll get some extra charge. In turn. So what do we got? Um, if it breaks their thing, deal damage to all the adjacent. It's not going to matter. Sharpening steel. We got the overbearing swing. So... Uh... This does it to both, right? Oh no, lane is back. Ro I always get it confused. Doesn't matter. Well, let's do the uh, 12 damage this way. Then we'll just play his axe, kill it. And then we'll come up here and effectively kill this unit. Well, definitely kill this unit. So weapon damage plus eight. That's huge, but it's three stamina. Uh, this just applies for mark, not great. Deal six damage to the opponent with the lowest vitality. It's free, pretty good. We're... I shouldn't take it. I really don't need a heavy blow, but I'm gonna take it, because why not? Again, if you've noticed, I haven't had a chance to remove any cards from my deck. Drunken guards is just free money, or I can buy cards. I don't need to buy anything. Take the free money. Crossroads down to two. Right before your final boss, you always kind of get this selection. You can go to the smithy, and you can buy stuff. You can go to the monastery to heal. We don't need that. Or you can go to the part, the tavern, and buy party members. We're going to buy a party member. So you click on them. shows you what they have. So this unit, uh, Tarawin, he is level 3. He's a 3 and 2, so this is all random, so you got to check it. He has the bill hook. The bill hook does 10 damage and moves swaps an opponent to target position. That's actually pretty powerful. It's actually extremely powerful, and he fits our two-handed weapon theme. Discard all ruin cards. Draw that many. That card is terrible for him. And he has absolutely unit. When this character is healed in combat, their vitality is healed to max. That's kind of neat. 48 hit points. Superior light armor. He fits our squad. But I don't have to buy him. I could instead buy Mowbury. See, I don't know why it like their icon like it should show the race of the character i think not just some default like blank card and the cost the cost just tells you what level they are too so again level three he's a four and one which i like that better he has vengeful uh whenever gain five uh rage whenever an ally dies rage uh whenever you deal damage you deal double that much it takes down by one each turn so if an ally dies they're gone for good you do not get to use them again they're removed from your party and all their stuff Vengeful, though, would be very powerful if my people died. They won't, ideally. His two equipments, he has the hammer, which does three damage and applies three vulnerable, or nine damage, three vulnerable. That's a really good one-hander. And he has just the shield. He also has sadist, gain two stamina for each status effect on target opponent. It's okay. Not really that good. So another marginal unit. And then lastly, we have Erwing. His cutthroat. Whenever he deals damage, apply one bleed. That's good. He has a two-handed weapon. He's 3-2. He also has the heal spell. Restore 12 health and remove all bleeds from each character in your rank. He has heavy armor. Not ideal. Uh, so effectively, he only has one stamina per turn. He can't play any of his cards. In that regard, he sucks. In that regard, he's kind of useless other than playing one attack. Like, if he draws this, he can't play it ever. But I'm probably going to hire him. I didn't look at this guy's armor. He has superior light. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and take Erwin. Uh, Erwin. One more level up and he's fine. Or if we can find a new armor for him, he's fine. So let's hire. Now I could hire the others. I have a lot of money. I could hire at least one. We're good with three units. Let's go to our party screen real quick. So we can change combat positions. I want them all in the front row because I have attack cards that are based on being in the front row. This does open us up to more sweep effects. I don't think that's going to matter too much for us. Not this early on. All right, and now we enter the hideout. This takes us to the first act boss. Henchman on either side, AKA blocked, 
You have to fight the boss, fight Sledge. Boss fights obviously are a little harder. I don't think this one's much harder than an elite combat. So it's a big all bear. And of course he has the fury mechanic. But now that we have another unit, first turn, he doesn't get the negative effects of his armor. So he can do whatever he's got. Uh, but it gives us a bigger stamina and mana pool and also spreads out the damage we take. So very useful. I think three is kind of I the ideal number. Some people think two. Right now they're all attacking my weasel, which is actually okay. So apply Toxic Cascade whenever the target opponent gains status effect, they also gain two. We'll start with that. We'll put it on the bear because he's going to give himself status effects and that'll po apply poison every time he does it. So actually really good for us. Uh, this unit can play his axe, deal, four, uh, deal 14 if it breaks shield, deal to each. I can do this to one of the uh, minions and it'll hit him, so that's not bad. Six damage to the rank, sure. Uh, can't afford to play this thing, we'll play it from this unit. This will apply bleed, which will also let us apply poison to the boss. Let's go ahead and do that. Poison Cascade. He has two poison. Every round it increases by one and they take that much damage. It does not ignore armor. And we'll just put some shield on this unit in turn. So once we get to the end of this fight, I will kind of give my review, my thoughts, what I think they need to do to the game. So stay tuned for that. Almost there, guys. This will be a quick fight. All right, who are they attacking? Everyone, Weasel, everyone. So... He does nine, three times nine, they're doing six. Oh, but we have Whirlwind. That's gonna do 28, uh, 42 damage, just enough to kill this unit. Um, yeah, I mean, we're obviously starting with that. The question I had was, do I wanna do it to this unit? And actually, let's start with this. Uh, he can do it, actually. I'm going to do 14 to this unit. And then I'm going to kill this unit. And... Hit the entire rank. Look, he's already at 15 poison because of the status effects he puts on himself. Oh, he also gets bolster. Yeah, so he's wrecking himself. This is great for us. Now we can do this we can move his position to the back row and now he's not going to take any damage this round and we'll just do this to the boss doesn't really matter in turn oh if i did that with the weasel he would have gained more bleed stacks that was a misplay he would have gained three more bleed and he would have gained six more poison because the weasel has the bleeding touch Let's see if i can demonstrate it right here uh yeah we have this card so Currently the bear is at 22 and three. He should go up to 24 and three. Or he's at 22 and two. He'll go up to 24 and three. Which is awesome. He's dead. He dies on his turn. Uh, toe to toe. Sure. We'll do a heavy blow. And sh armor, charge, and turn. Boss dies. Still got to kill the minions. Okay. I don't know why I get moved. I guess that's what his attack was going to do. Uh, what, we have healed? Okay, sure. Let's do the heal. This guy's ability. Heal him up. Why not? Attack. Poison the guy. Attack. And who whose card is this? Oh, it's his. He can't even do it. Who are you attacking? My guy down here. So unfortunately, I just don't have enough stamina to use his his sword. So they bleed. They do nothing, and we win the fight. Gain a card. I'm glad we saw these cards here. So again, we're seeing a dual wielding weapon uh, ability. It does use willpower, but it is an extremely effective attack. Think if you have that hammer. That's nine times three, twenty-seven damage. Um, pretty good and also to use charge abilities things like that so not bad if you apply status effects per hit so powerful skill double team on the other hand if you hire people of the same race 
So if I had three mice, double team gets crazy effective. Normally it just gains six shield and one charge. Now if the character has any neighbors of the same race, they all gain 12 and five charge. That is very, very powerful. So if you have three mice in the front row, you played on the center one, they all get 12 armor and get five charge. If one of them has an attack that does four times three, that attack goes from doing 12 damage to doing 27 damage. So very effective. Or if you have the card next to it, Wildfire, you would do nine damage to each member of the opponent party. So this kind of gives you an idea of some of the combos that come up with the deck. We're gonna take none though, because of course that's what we do every time. And let's look at the equipment. You should see, no, still none of the special equipment. So we do have one better. Uh, we're gonna switch the the muskrat, the weasel to uh, the medium armor. So he gains one less winded. We'll wrap up this combat here. Let's move on. So at the end of each act, you get a chance at taking a thousand money leveling up a character, or healing the party to full. We have a heal spell in our party, so we rarely will ever need to heal at full. Gaining a full level, if you notice the hero we just bought, he was at, he had just hit level three technically. So we can level him up to level four, which we will do. So yeah, level him. My mouse will level up soon enough. Give him his ability. So he'll get another stamina here and outnumbered deal weapon damage if opponent has no allies on their rank deal it twice more that's pretty good with the two-hander in fact characters in front row deal one times five damage if in the back rank deal five that card is terrible it's good with charge if you have charge on your character say we had charge five that goes from doing five damage to doing uh 30 damage or another toxic cascade whenever the target opponent gains status effect they also gain two that's a good one he won't be able to play it, or yeah, he will. And then you begin the whole process again. So that's it, that's the playthrough. That's one third of the game. Number one complaint I have of this game. Each run is too long. I'm explaining it. If I'm not explaining, best case I can do act one in 20 to 25 minutes. The later acts get really complex as far as the opponents have can do a lot of damage. They have a lot of armor. It takes like, like I said, act three fights can sometimes take 14 turns. And those turns, it's really you just waiting on your poison to multiply up and kill them. That's it. Uh, so that aspect of the game is a little long. I think maybe each street should only be about 10 encounters. Rebalance it to that. That would help. Uh, otherwise, I like the setup. I think some of the cards could. Uh, some of the encounters you get along the street. A little better explanation. Another thing I would like to see is more opportunities to remove cards from your deck. Like literally, there should just be an encounter like remove two cards from your deck. Period. That would be excellent. Um, it would also make it more worthwhile to try out cards, try going for strategies. If it pays off, it pays off. If it doesn't, you have some ways to recover. Um, those are the two big ones that I have. The healing spell is very powerful. So again, my two complaints, runs are a little long, not enough opportunity to remove cards from your deck. Things I like about the game. I think the the race system or the team up system is fun i like the equipment system i wish you had a couple slots to carry extra stuff with you say you're about to go buy a party member and you want to make sure they can be your tank and have short and sword and shield so you can keep your shield with you in case they are only a dual wielder because their weapons and their abilities don't necessarily line up so sometimes you want to have that extra equipment to make their skills work properly but that's my biggest one uh so check it out, it is available on Steam. I would say this is a recommend if you like the Slay the Spire type games. It is an early access, they are not moving quickly, I have not seen a ton of changes, but I expect, uh, well I expect if you like those kind of games, this will be your jam. That'll do it guys. Hope you enjoyed, comment, like and subscribe. Thank you, Bye bye